OK, here's the situation for question 9. Let's just put in some forces. A is resting on a smooth slope, so there's no friction. But we do know that the weight of A is 0.2 kilogram, sorry, 0.2 G. And we also know that the weight of B is 0.1 G. Now we've got a smooth and extensible string. So there's tension in the string, that's what's holding B up. So the tension on B is acting upwards. The tension on A is what's tending to make it go down the slope, putting it down the slope. So there's the tension on A. And we're also told that there's this force of X newtons, which is holding A on the slope because the slope is smooth. So we're trying to find out what X is. So first of all, I'm, I know that this is in equilibrium. So I know that if I look at B, then the forces acting up on B must be the same as the forces acting down. So T must equal 0.1 G to start with. If I now look at A, again, the forces acting up the slope, and that's only X, must equal the forces which are acting down the slope. So acting down the slope, you've got T, but you've also got the component of the weight. Sorry, I didn't put the angles in here. The slope makes an angle of 10 degrees with the horizontal. So that angle there is 10. This angle here, then, must be 80 degrees. So we've got X acting upwards, acting downwards. We've got T. We've also got the component of the weight, which is acting in the same direction as T. And that's going to be 0.2 G. So that's positive. 0.2 G cos 80 degrees. Now, we already know T. We already know that T from up here is 0.1 G. X is going to be 0.1 G plus 0.2 G cos 80 degrees. And if we work that out, X comes out as to three significant figures, 1.32 newtons. OK, the second part of this question says that this X newton force is removed. OK, so what's going to happen is instead of the whole thing just sitting at rest there on the slope, it's going to start to accelerate down the slope. I'll do this in green so we can distinguish between the two. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to assume that A is accelerating down the slope, which it will be, and B is accelerating in a downwards direction. So now I'm going to use Newton's second law on each of those. So if we first of all look at B, so for Newton's second law, acting downwards, you've got that 0.1 G, but the tension is acting upwards. So the resultant force in a downward direction is 0.1 G minus T, and that's going to equal the mass, which is 0.1 times acceleration. Now, if we do the same thing on A, I'm going to use, so that for B, I use Newton's second law downwards. For A, I'm going to use Newton's second law down the slope. Now, if we look at the forces acting down the slope, there's nothing um, acting up the slope at all. But we've got two forces acting down the slope, the tension and also the component of the weight acting down the slope. So to the, com um, the combined force on A going down the slope is T plus 0.2 G cos 80 degrees. And that's going to equal the mass of A, which is 0.2 times the acceleration. Now, if I add these two equations together, there's number 1 and there's number 2. So adding them together, the t's are going to cancel, minus t here plus t here. So I've got 0.1g plus this bit, so 0.2g cos 80 degrees. <coughs> and that's going to equal 0.1a plus 0.2a, well, that's 0.3. A. In fact, I've realized that this is the same as this over here, which I've already worked out. Saved it in the memory of my calculator as wasn't actually 1.32, it was 1.31, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> and that is equal to 0.3A. So from that, I can find out what A is. A comes out as 4.4011 meters per second per second. Um, and I can then go back to, um, doesn't really matter, probably this first equation. So I know that if I rearrange that, T is going to equal 0.1 G minus 0.1 A. So if I substitute in, so I do my 0.1 G minus 0.1 times that 4.401 that I've saved, T comes out as 0.53988, which rounds to 0.5. 40 newtons.